Good morning, tubers. Madam Roy back again. Back to you with another product review. This one I'm going to call How Well Does It Work? This is going to be a new segment that I'm going to do on my channel that's going to showcase some uh, cheap alternatives to the more expensive product. In this case, we are looking at a super bright tactical telescoping flashlight. This is something that I purchased from the local Dollar Tree, my local Dollar Tree, a few days back and I just really wanted to see how well this works and I thought well you know what I think my YouTube subscribers would also like to see how well this works. So let's, without further ado, let's look at some first impressions here. Um, once again they call it the super bright tactical telescoping flashlight. Well we know those are just buzzwords. We'll have to see exactly how good or bad this product really is. Down here it says adjust for a wider or narrower beam of light which basically means you can twist this right up here. This is basically the lens and it'll give you a wide beam of light or a narrow beam of light. The narrow beam of light would be nice say if you were trying to work on your car in the middle of the night and you need a really intense bright light on a specific area of the engine that's when you want to use something like that. It does come with a wrist strap, though I doubt that would fit on my wrist. First impressions of the outside, it is definitely very cheaply made. This is all plastic. There is no metal to be had here. If you look in here, you definitely can see a magnified lens of some type. Way down in there, you can see, I believe that's one or maybe two LEDs. And yes, it is an LED light for sure. Um, back here... It does say made in China, so we'll have to see. It's probably China Pride, but you know what? Let's not have any preconceived notions. We'll go ahead and give this a try in just a minute. As you can see, it is imported by Greenbrier International, which is the parent company of Dollar Tree Incorporated. So if you look over here, you can see, and it is very, very crudely drawn on. And if I don't drop it, you can see where it says zoom in and zoom out. It tells you how you can... Uh, twist it to get the wide or the narrow being the out being the wide of course and the in being the narrow so without further ado let's go ahead and open this up I'm gonna remove the packaging and we'll see what the uh, battery compartment looks like alright now that I've removed the battery the uh, cover and of course the packaging you can see that um, this is your switch very typical for these more modern flashlights the little switch is, is rubberized which is nice I'm glad that's not hard plastic though if it's a poor quality of rubber after after a few months of use they do tend to start cracking but it appears that the switch is fairly solid there is your lead right there I believe let's see if that's negative or positive I'll go ahead and pull out the uh, little battery ca uh, case here that is the positive lead you can see right there discerned by the plus sign then of course would be the negative again very typical for a modern day flashlight you have this little um, battery holder that holds three triple A batteries we can look down there, you can definitely see the um, the negative side of that. I really would have liked to have seen a little bit more metal showing there. Um, it does not appear that there is a good conductor for the um, negative side, but we'll just have to see how that works. A lot of the more um, expensive flashlights will have a lot more metal in use there. So let's go ahead and put in three AAA batteries and we'll see how well this flashlight does work, if it works at all. Just a quick note before I go any further, make sure when you do this you are inserting the batteries properly. You can always usually tell the spring side is generally where the negative is. Um, there are a few exceptions to that rule, but generally that's the case. In this case, two of the batteries go this way, one goes the opposite way. All right, let's go ahead and put this back in, remembering that the positive is towards the bottom. So go ahead and put that back in. And I will need two hands to put that back on, so I'm going to pause the video. And we'll go ahead and see if and how well this thing actually does function. Okay, wow guys. Well, apparently they did not put this in correctly. Even though the positive was towards the back of this where the switch is, it actually works the opposite way. The positive needs to be towards the, uh, the terminal needs to be towards the light and the negative towards the switch. So apparently whoever did this did not... Um, put that in properly probably again China pride somebody that just wasn't paying attention um, but let's go ahead I did turn it on for a second and I did see a light come on so we're gonna go ahead and test this I just closed my curtain so we can go ahead and get a good test and what I'm gonna do 
I'm going to shut the light off on the camcorder. I'm actually going to shine it right here on the Dell logo, and we'll see how good this thing does Okay, got the light off. Three, two, one. Wow. Okay. Well, first impressions, I must say that uh, for a narrow beam, that is pretty, uh, pretty bright, actually. Um, you can see the Dell logo is coming in very clearly. As a matter of fact, the uh, it's so bright the camera can't even focus at this point. So what I'm going to do, see if I can do this one-handed. Basically what you do to adjust the beam is you twist this entire top here. Okay, oh wow, that was, a <laughs> wow. <laughs> that was actually in the wide mode. So this is the narrow mode, and this is the wide beam mode. And basically, again, I said, what you do is you just twist this top, narrow, wide. And I must say, the intensity does not seem to be that different from the narrow to wide mode, which basically probably means this isn't the best uh, magnifier in here. But I'm going to go around the room and show you. I mean, it's not pitch black, but you can kind of see looking at the bed that it does a decent job. Um, I would say that... A more expensive tactile flash, of course, would do a much better job, but for a dollar, I would most definitely say this is worth picking up. It is, again, on the cheaper side, but if you're looking for a flashlight to use in your car for emergencies, this would definitely do the trick. And as you can see, I'm shaking it, and it's definitely not losing connection, so apparently they did a half-decent job of putting enough metal in there so it conducts the current properly. So... Let's go ahead and turn this light back on. How would I actually rate this? Well, if I was to do it on a scale of 1 to 10, I would have to give this about a 6. Build quality would probably be a 3. It, let's face it, it's, it, it's not going to take a lot of abuse. If you were trying to use this on a, on a, on a job somewhere in, in a uh, construction site, this thing would probably be destroyed in a day. But if you just need a good flashlight to get you by in an emergency, I would say this would fit the bill in for a dollar definitely cannot go wrong. Hope you guys really enjoyed this video, and yes, I did shoot this with the Sony DCR-TRV 260, mainly because I, this has very, very good low-light um, response. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it once again. Please continue to remember to like and subscribe, and as always, have a blessed day, everybody.